Ite ma pastor atahiang ago atana ring lami. Ai boku cai one sai manga one ranga. Ite ma general secretary for education and formation and then general procurator. Agu ase ka e cama lain ite. Rawang dami etan ma provincial. Rektor, magister, lawang ami novis ce novisiat sang sarda kubuho. Kecan Wali di alami kampi mori jari ahia politi tongagu palong sarong laku dite. Pung lomai roma lawang ce novisiat sang sarda kubuho. Ite cai temeng sehat beki agu bak. Bengkes ketanai dami. Ai lorong embal mori dewa. Lengkang lemas. Ku tengalas nava mai labar. Cama lain hami cek nata sang sabda ho. Maha bet one meseng one sua. Ku tepecing agu nanang cumang ite. Landing kanang atang amang. Landing one mai leso ho o. Ite rebos nai dami. Ite lage vai. Lejong beo manga one nata sang sabda ho. Ite. Mau tu eti badi alami. Ite mai ga. Naka lami ite cama neo vua pandang, kapu lami ite cama neo vua pau. Ku cama cama ite lo soho. Hitu de naka agu dami, kepo. Ku terima kasih banyak. Lord Jesus Christ, we are given a grateful for all the graces you have given to us until now. Now we want to start our activity. Please bless us so all goes well. We ask your best through the hands of your priest, Father Magister. The Lord be with you. Amen. 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 Now God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. First of all, I would like to pass the apology from our Father Rector. Father Rector is having an important meeting in the uni, so he will be here maybe around 10 o'clock. My dear brothers and yeah, all brothers, <coughs> no sister here. <laughs> uh, we are so delighted to be visited by two important persons from the Korea, from the SPD Korea, from Rome. That's Father Peter Vikos, he is the general procurator. Look at this handsome man here. We are one dog. We are one dog. <laughs> He's originally from Slovakia. Slovakia. But he was a missionary to two countries, even three now. He was in Papua New Guinea many years. He was teaching in a seminary. And then moved to Australia for several years in Australia. And then called by the general to help out in Rome. And now he's working as general procurator 
in Rome. So it's between working between SVD and the Vatican. So he will explain this drawer later on. And he <coughs> ask so many questions about that. And for Augustine, Puspa, hey, I'm very sorry to pronounce your name. Yeah. Yes, Father Augustine and Pupambu, yeah, sorry, this name, Pupambu. And he's the General Secretary for Education and Formation. Yeah. Looks short, but it's a very important man. A very intelligent person. He's working how many years now? Now only from 2018. 2018. So already four years and maybe some more years to go. So welcome. So we are so pleased to have you here. And Father Peter Nikos is the second time come to this community. But first time was with Father uh, Super General, 2000 Father Budi, and 2015 or 16 during that time. And Father Augustine, maybe it's first time. So all our friends are waiting to hear from you. And I would like also to introduce uh, the member of the and all the novices, they are all 93 at present. 49 first year, canonical year, and second year 43. 43, right? Yes. Yes. And uh, professed members, we are nine. We are nine professed members. And most of us work in the formation. And we have one uh, good worker here, Brad Anthony, that is uh, working in the general hospital. Yeah. He's our hospital. And then we have our two retired men, Brad Franz Pura. He's, he's living here, he's a retired. And for Jan Duang, but he's still working also helping out in the formation. And for the rector himself. And we have our lay workers, our lay workers all together 19. Some working in the kitchen, garden, taking care of our pig farm, and also carpenter. Yeah. So all together, uh, around 121 something. Yeah. So maybe you heard about this our class situation here, the, about the death of our brother, our seminarian, now his second, second year, Enricus Arvodem. So the death of our brother, the baby couldn't look at the like an accident. But later on, personally, through sort of events now, I consider that he was really planned by God. And a kind of blessing also, because I experienced something very interesting. Maybe later on I will share with you, either from us or from the family. I will let you know later on about uh, some stories, beautiful stories happening. So maybe that's all from our side. So now, I give this time to both of you to introduce yourself and also to share what you are going to share with us. And maybe later on also, um, if you give us a chance to ask questions, we are very happy to also ask some questions. So the rest is yours. Thank you. And before we start, <coughs> Before we start talking, I would suggest that we pray for the soul of our confrere who passed away. Our Father, who art in heaven,
Selamat siang. Selamat siang. Indonesia subzone. Also Indo-Leste subzone. And it has been a very enriching moment for us to interact with the farmers and the farmers of Indonesia. Indonesia is very important <coughs> for the members of the society of the divine world for the reason that many of our conferences from indonesia are working abroad as missionaries wherever you go to any of our provinces or missions or regions we always find our Young missionaries doing wonderful service as divine word missionaries. And many of them are also holding responsible posts, going abroad as missionaries. Many of them are also engaged in uh, formation ministry. For example, in Rome, at the generate level, we usually organize formators course, those who are going to be formators. And many of them who came there for the formators course, they're all from Indonesia, working in different parts of the world. Moreover, the maximum number of uh, SVDs today are from Indonesia. So Indonesia plays an important role in the society's activities. And that is the reason why I was also very personally interested to visit our formation houses not just visiting our formation houses, but I also would like to acknowledge the contributions of our formators as well as our farmers in Indonesia. So thank you very much for being part of our SBD Worldwide Family. I think uh, who novitiate is the largest novitiate in the world, in the SPD world. I think this year in Nanook, there are about 78, I think, novices. In Bartu, there are only 28 novices. And in India, for example, we have only one novitiate and there are only about 24 novices. They will be taking their first profession uh, by beginning of uh, next month. And of course in Europe, we don't have uh, many farmies. Panam also, not so. But in Afram, we have uh, again three novitiates. And all these novitiates are all international intercultural novitiates means novices from one country within Africa Afram zone will be sent to some other novitiates in another country so in that way in Afram the formation program is taking place interculturally and internationally and for here with a large number of uh, novices and I am sure the novice master as well as the assistants are doing a commendable job 
service not only for you as now he says for the entire society of the divine world so i would like to thank all of you the staff as well as the novices on behalf of our superior general for the paulus who declared him and all the general administrative team and wish you all the best and hearty congratulations for the step that you have taken in your life and definitely the entire society will accompany you they will help you they will pray for you as you always pray for the members of the society of the divine world today we are proud to have nearly 6000 members in our society all the 6000 members are working in almost 78 countries close to 80 countries in all over the world and we are all called as divine world missionaries what is the focal point what are we as divine world missionaries should always carry forward from the novitiate till we die as divine world missionaries when for the paulus who declared and took over as the superior general he set a kind of a theme for the entire society for the next 6 years till 2024 in 2024 we will have the 19th general chapter and i am sure you may have also reflected on the communal reflection of preparation for the 19th general chapter did you have the communal reflections in preparation for the 19th general chapter you remember the theme the theme is let your light shine before others matthew 5:16 ch- ch- verse 16 faithful and creative disciples in the wounded world did you have the discussions already or you are ready to have yes you had already okay so you will remember the theme so in night the 2018 when for the paulus who declared and took over as the superior general he set a theme a focal point for all the members of the society of the divine world the theme was faithful to the word one with the people faithful to the word one with the people that was the theme faithful to the word means to love the word and also to make the word as our primary concern word why word because we are all who are we yes we need means yes we need means what provinces divine word missionaries no yes we need means divine word missionaries the word word w o r d word word of god the word of god so we are to love the word of god and we have to make the word of god as the primary concern the priority in life the priority should be the word of god one with the people one with the people means to be able to love people especially those who are poor marginalized those who are at the peripheries and we always try to bring them to the forefront 
So keep in mind, as a divine word missionary, as a novice, we must always make the word of God as our primary concern. We must always love the word of God at all times. Love the word of God. And for that only, we are all preparing ourselves to love the word, to make the word as our primary concern, and to engage ourselves in our ministries, in bringing the poor and the marginalized to the poor friend. Again, formation in our society is a priority. Formation of the commies, like you all, the commies novices, and also the importance of formators is also the concern of our society today. Now, just to explain to you about our formation, there are diocesans, there are people belonging to other religious traditions who also undergo formation. What is the speciality of a SVD formation? What is that makes us to be an SVD? How can we train ourselves to become an efficient and a matured divine word missionaries. How can I become? Our formation, first of all, is for mission. Our formation is for mission. And that is why our congregation is a missionary congregation. Missionary congregation. Missionary congregation in the sense we always go out to the whole world to proclaim the good news. When our founder founded the congregation, he had one purpose in his mind. What was the purpose? That we as divine word missionaries spread the word of God wherever it has not been preached or insufficiently preached. No? That is why today, as I told you, we are working in remote areas, remote countries, remote provinces, where there are no much facilities, no proper roads, no internet, no electricity, no water supply, but we find ourselves as happy missionaries wherever we are. Keep in mind, we are all basically missionaries. Our formation is for mission. And we must accept the challenges of life. We must accept all that happens in life to be able to adjust to all kinds of situations because we are to become missionaries. So our formation is always for mission. Secondly, our formation is integral or holistic. You know the word integral, what do you say in Indonesia, Bahasa? Integral? Say it louder. Okay. Manjalun. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. So integral or holistic. In our formation, there are four main dimensions. 
Now, four main aspects. What are those four main aspects? Number one, spiritual dimension, spirituality. And the very purpose of novitiate is to grow in your spirituality, spiritual dimension. Ability to pray, no, ability to pray. Ability to keep silence. Silence also is very important in the novitiate. Ability to read the word of God regularly. Even personal reading of the word of God. Participating in the sacraments. Regular mass, confessions, and all the other sacraments, regularly participating in them. And we are expected to grow in our spirituality, spiritual life. So spiritual dimension is very important. Spirituality. And the novitiate is meant for that. This is the first place where some of you come and join our SPD congregation. <clears throat> Learn about the spirituality of our society. The spirituality of our founder. The founding generation. And try to grow in your spiritual life. Spirituality. The second dimension is intellectual dimension. Many times when I receive the novitiates, the novices often say, Father, we have lots of free time. Lots of free time. That is not free time actually. You are supposed to be spending your time. And even here in the novitiate, you must train your mind to grow intellectually. That is why you must also know what is happening around the world. Read books, spiritual books for example, and that also will help you intellectually. You must have interest for intellectual life, intellectuality. Some of our novices may be thinking, Anyway, we are going to become missionaries. Why do I work hard? What do I need to study? No. As SPDs, we also have educational institutions. We have universities. We have research centers. We have physiological centers. You must take interest to read to write and also to take interest in research activities. So try to understand this aspect and try to grow intellectually. Intellectual dimension is also very important. The third dimension is human dimension. What is this human dimension? Human dimension is all about your behavior. How do I behave? Life of honesty, sincerity. How do I manage my emotions? No, my emotions. Emotional balance. How do I grow? Take care of my fears in life. For example, fears. Some of us may have fears of uh, the superiors. Fears of others. How do I tackle the emotional aspects of my life? How sincere and honest am I? How sincere and honest am I? How is my behavior, for example, human behavior? How do I relate with others? 
How do I relate with others? How do I balance my emotions, including my sexuality? Do I share these aspects with my spiritual directors and learn to grow? So human dimension is also another important dimension today which is very much stressed. Somehow or the other, all of us can be wounded in one way or the other. Nobody is perfect here. Is there anyone who is very perfect here? Is there anybody who is perfect here? Nobody is perfect. But we can work towards our perfection. How can I do that? By being open to my spiritual directors. Open to my moderators. So this is where the human dimension is very important. Probably when Father Peter does the presentation, he will also insist on this aspect. The fourth dimension is the missionary or pastoral dimension. As missionaries, we need to go out to the people. We are not to go to the room and lock up ourselves. We are for the people. That is why we must also engage in some activities that will enable us to have interaction with the people. Maybe parishes or through our various activities we try to engage ourselves with the outsiders. Why do we need this? When we are within these four walls, we will feel very comfortable. We will not know what is happening outside. You must also know how people suffer, <coughs> undergo pains, difficulties outside. We must experience them also. And this is where the pastoral or visionary dimension comes in. So these are the four basic dimensions. What are the dimensions of the formation? Number one, spiritual, intellectual, human, and visionary or a pastoral dimension. In the formation, we try to include all the four, okay? We include all the four in the formation. And that is why we call our formation is a integral formation. You now you understand the word integral. Integral or holistic. So I grow in my spirituality, in my intellectual life, in my human behavior, as well as in my approach to missionary or pastoral aspects. Thirdly, our formation also helps us in our intercultural living, interculturality. Interculturality is a commitment that we make as an SPV. That is our mission. Interculturality is our mission. Our way of life. Interculturality and internationality. That we as divine word missionaries try to live together together with conference from various cultures. I am sure in Indonesia you are truly living your intercultural life. People from various cultural backgrounds, you try to live your life together as a brothers. Not holding on to my own culture, but trying to understand others' cultures and try to live in a harmonious way of life. As I said, intercultural life, international life, 
is our mission and this is also our contribution to the church outside when father tony pernia one of the previous the previous superior general was addressing the superior general there are so many congregations we all know all the congregations have their own superior general when tony was presenting about the society of the divine word and he was reminding the superior general that the spd society is one of the societies missionary congregations which is almost in a stable situation with regard to the number and it is one of the leading missionary congregations in the world spd society is a leading missionary congregations in the world so many congregations have drastically reduced in number including the jesuits they have drastically reduced in number over the years but our congregation is able to sustain itself so one of the superiors general got up and asked for the tony what is it how is it that your congregation is growing in number at least there is a stability with regard to the number while many other congregations are going down with regard to the number and for the tony's answer was we the divine word missionaries live our intercultural life and that is the reason why we are able to keep up that number intercultural life so intercultural life interreligious life is very important aspect of our formation today so keep in mind you are not training yourself to be working in the rural province or in the province or any other particular province we are not training form is to be in an spd diocese you call it spd diocese there is no spd diocese our spd is a world wide missionary congregation anybody who enters our congregation should be willing to go anywhere the society sends them and that is the reason why we have number of our congregants working all over the world being in intercultural life also means that you must take the language study seriously language in our congregation we have uh, two important languages one is uh, spanish the other one is english and we expect that all of you learn english very well because english is a most common language that we can always communicate with others some of you next year may go for otp or esp or ctp south the second year no no not year okay. year no they don't go okay. so when you go for outside for uh, these outside programs we must be well versed in language so don't take it as a burden that you are taught english here but take it as a missionary call to be a missionary means i must be willing to learn the language wherever we are we must be able to learn our languages because learning a language is a missionary character missionary charism so try to include in inculcate try to imbibe try to practice this aspect of missionary life from the beginning of our formation so keep in mind our formation is always missionary formation in mission for mission our formation is always integral and our formation is intercultural there are many other things that we are also known for for example the four fold prophetic dialogue 
Have you heard about the fourfold prophetic dialogue? Yeah, yes or no? Maybe slowly you will come to know that our life has to be in dialogue. Dialogue with cultures, dialogue with the poor and the marginalized, dialogue with people of various uh, uh, religions, and dialogue with the faith seekers, those who don't have religion. Even with them, we must establish dialogue, connecting. We must always establish connection. That is how we become one with the people. Then another important aspect of our society is also the characteristic dimensions. The characteristic dimensions. The dimensions of mission animation, biblical apostolate, communication, and justice, peace, and integrity of creation, JPIC. So these are also to be integral part of our formation. So my request is that you try to make use of all the opportunities that are provided to you here. You have wonderful staff members, the novice master, the rector, the assistants are here. Learn from them, approach them at any time, open up yourself to them, and when you open up yourself to them, you will also grow. And you will become a more matured and efficient divine word missionary. So thank you very much for listening to me. And also thank you very much for being part of our society of the divine word. And continue your formation journey. And I am sure God will always be with you. Terima kasih. As Father Abu already said, I would like to express also my gratitude to all of you for having chosen our society as your family. You know, in one way, we are losing our blood family. But entering into the society, we are entering into a new family. You know, later on, when you go to the mission, you will understand what I am talking about, because Father Freddy, Father, uh, Father Vitalis, and uh, we were in, in the mission. And any time I was leaving the house, it was very difficult for me. Especially when I was leaving uh, for the mission when my parents were getting older and older, it was always more difficult to leave the, the blood family. But I did it because I knew I have other family. And I was doing that for my spiritual family. So it's important that you feel like at home in SVD. You are in the family. It's very important. You know, and now you are in the process of formation. You are in the process of discernment. So because uh, during the novitiate, I believe at the end of the novitiate, you have to decide whether you want to be a brother or whether you want to be a priest. Don't feel bad to decide to be a brother because sometimes, you know, all of us want to be a priest because priest sometimes in the eyes of the people is higher. People think so. That Priest is higher than a brother. Don't be afraid to choose also the brother. Because all of us, whether you decide to be a brother or somebody decides to be a priest, all of us are brothers. 
because we have what? The same yes. vows. I did not become priest and then a member of the religious congregation. All of us first have to make the vows. The first vows, second vows, third vows, and then probably the perpetual vows. And then later on, okay, I can be ordained deacon or, a, or I, I can be ordained a priest. But first of all, we are brothers because the vows make us equal. So you are in the proce process of discernment. You know, you enter the society, probably you already had some kind of idea who would you like to be, a brother or a priest. It can happen that you, if you enter with the idea to become a brother, probably during the, the time of novitiate, you decide to be a priest. It's okay. And it might happen that you who enter the, the congregation, the novitiate, with an idea to become a priest, probably you will decide to become a brother. That's perfect. But be honest during your time of novitiate. You know, I would uh, like to address you with a question. What was the motivation of our founder, Arnold Johnson, to establish the Society of the Divine War? What was the motivation? Why did he come up with the Society of the Divine War? What was the reason for creating the society? Did he want to become a big man? No. Did he want to travel around the world? No. What was the motivation? To spread the word. To spread the word of God, especially in those places where the word of God was not yet heard. This was the reason, to send the missionaries to the places where the people did not hear the word of God yet. And that was the reason, that was the motivation. And because of this motivation, you know how, how many problems and difficulties had when he was starting the, the congregation. Even the bishops were laughing at him. They were asking, where do you have the money to, to create this kind of society? And he said, in the pocket of the people. So he, this motivation actually uh, drove him and pushed him ahead. If he did not have good motivation, he would have given up. He would have said, I'm not going to suffer. I'm not going uh, to, to actually be humiliated by other people because they are laughing at me. Why should I suffer this? But we, we had, he had a right motivation. And that motivation helped him to carry on. And he managed to establish the society. Not only society of divine war, but we know that he also established the society of SSPS sisters and SSPS sisters of perpetual adoration. We are one family, you see? But it was this perseverance. But he had to have right motivation. And now I would like to appeal to you. You entered the congregation of the Divine War. What was your motivation for entering the society? You don't have to answer to me. I do not want to hear that. After this meeting, today, tomorrow, during these days, or after one week, go to the chapel and be honest in front of God. Be honest with God, be honest with yourself, and answer this question. 
Why am I today in the novitiate of the divine world? What did motivate me to enter the society? Was it because I finished the minor seminary and my parents did not have the tuition fees to probably pay later on my studies, then I decided to enter the Society of the Divine World because I know that they will pay mostly my tuition fees. I hear nowadays that uh, if you enter into the philosophy or theology study, studies, your family later on has to contribute also. This is the new policy. It is not like before, because before many, many candidates were entering the society just because they wanted to continue with the studies. The parents did not have the money to help them to continue with the studies, so they decided to, to enter in the congregation of the Divine Lord or different congregations. But this is not right, genuine motivation. And I can tell you that those confreres who led the congregation and the priesthood later had this kind of wrong motivation. They did not survive. When, when they encountered, when they met the problems during their religious or priestly life, they gave up. They decided to leave the congregation, they decided to leave the prison because they did not have the drive, they did not have the right motivation to persevere. As I told you, our founder had the, the right motivation and despite all of, of, all, of, of all of those difficulties and problems, he managed to carry on. And today he is saved. So it is the same in our vocation. If we have the right motivation to become religious, to become priests, then certainly no matter what difficulties we will find on our way, even to the to the brotherhood or priesthood or later on after the final vows and ordination. No matter what difficulties we will find, we will manage to carry on. And as Father Ambu said, we will, we will manage to carry on in our life because we have right motivation and we are sustained by the spiritual life. That's very important. So, answer this question in these days. Go to the chapel and answer it. What is my motivation for being here in Kubu in this place? Okay? So, this is my first challenge. The second, because why, why did I give you this question? Because as I said, I can give you many examples of the conference who left the society who expressed them. Because when they left the congregation and when they asked for laicization, so there is the questionnaire. And one of the conferences wrote, I entered the society because I wanted to continue with, uh, with my studies. Another one said, I entered the society because my parents want me to enter the society. Because you know, in this country, the brother and the priest, they have high respect from the people. Even now, when, whenever we go, and if we say, Sayaromo, oh, but it, you know, immediately they show high respect. <laughs> and sometimes, this kind of respect of people can be abused from our side. You know, just for our... Our purpose is because we want to become big men and also probably our parents can raise their status because in the clan people will look at them from different angle. They will say, oh, that's the parents of, of that religious brother, that's the parents of, 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 of Aromo. You know, and 
they will be somehow raising their status. So this is this is not the way. So please be honest. And uh, during uh, during this process of discernment, you should not be open only with God and with yourself. During this process, you have formators. They are here to walk with you. They are here to accompany you. So, the formators are not here to be policemen. You see, Father Freddy has the same cassock as you do. He doesn't have police uniform. He is not here to, to watch over you. Because you are here first of most because you decided and you are for me. You cannot expect that Father Freddy or his, his uh, socius will form you. If you are not willing to form you, they can have all power but nothing will help you to change. They are here to walk with you, to accompany you. And that's why, if you want them to accompany you on the process of formation, you have to open up to them. You have to tell them about your problems and difficulties. Because, you know, even the child, sometimes child can be crying, but if the child does not talk to, to his or her mom, mom, mom can only guess. But the guess might not be right. So the child, once the child starts talking, the child will say, Mom, Mom, I am hungry, I am thirsty, I feel pain. And then mom can help the child. But if the child does not talk to, to his or her mom, mom also can be very close to the child, but can only guess. And sometimes the guess might be wrong. So you see, be open with your formators. You know, sometimes it is difficult. I understand that. Because I, saw, I was also in the formation, I was in the seminar. And sometimes we were living in some kind of fear. Because, you know, sometimes we were afraid, if I do not follow 100% the regulations and the rules of the seminary, if I, if I make a mistake, the first thing the formators would tell me would, would be, fuck up and go home. You have no place in the formation. This is not the right way. Because sometimes the formators can create atmosphere of fear. You know, and then you are afraid to, to go to, to the formator and tell him, Father, I fell in love. I have a girlfriend. Can you, can you help me with this problem? Can you walk with me? Can you accompany me? You would be afraid because probably if you have a uh, hundred, hundred, uh, almost hundred novices, then you would say one, one more or less. Okay, go home. This is not the way. This is not the way. I give you, I give you an example. How the, the, the formators can create the atmosphere of fear. There was a group of seminarians, they were already in the seminary, it was not in the novitiate, but they were in the seminary, major seminary. It was just before the finals of the Europe Champions League. You know, I do not know who, who was playing Chelsea against Barcelona, I do not know already, but uh, that was the finals, no? And the group of uh, some seminarians came to, to the prefect and they, they asked him, Father Prefect, can we, can we watch tonight the finals of the Champions League? And the prefect said, no, 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 because after, after 10 o'clock 
is sac uh, silencium sacrum. You have to go and sleep because uh, in the morning you are getting up early. No way. <laughs> okay. The, the group of seminarians, one of them, I think, uh, was hiding the laptop in his room, so they connected, they created hotspot from the, from the mobile phone, and they started watching. They found the site, you know, and they started watching the finals. So they were enjoying. <laughs> Suddenly, Mother Prefect. <laughs> The prefect got really angry, he scolded him, and he said, in the morning I will make you feel that you made a mistake. You know what the prefect did? During the Holy Eucharist in the chapel, he scolded them in front of the whole, whole seminar. And then, what is even worse, he forbade them to receive the Holy Communion because he said, you committed a grave sin. Grave sin by breaking this smaller rule. I do not want to say that they did an excellent job, you know, but how can the prefect also judge what kind of sin they committed. And why would the prefect forbid them from the Holy Communion? Because they could have uh, made the act of perfect contrition, even if they, if it, even if it was a grave sin. But still, the prefect does not have the right to, to tell them, you cannot receive the Holy Communion. Why, I, why am I saying that? I will apply to you, to your situation. If you experience this kind of situation with your prefect or novice master or with one of uh, so, uh, so, uh, so if you experience it, would you go next time when you, when you encounter the problem in your spiritual life, would you go to such prefect and open up? Would you go? I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go. I would be scared. You see how the formator sometimes can create the atmosphere of fear. But again, you know, uh, it is not only the formators that are creating the atmosphere of trust and openness. It depends also very much on you, how honest and open you are with the formators. Because if they see that you are honest and open, they will try to be honest and open with you. But if they see you are tricking them, they will have always some kind of suspicion. Whatever you do, they will be suspected. Or probably he is doing something wrong immediately. You know? So it is two-way road. So you have to, to work with each other to create atmosphere of trust and openness. When you, when you, uh, the situation in which you feel comfortable to come to one of the formators and say, you can say, Father, I have a problem. I need your help. And then the formators can do their job. Otherwise, you are wasting time. If you do not open up yourself, you will be wasting time because you will be uh, growing like crooked tree. You know, if the, the tree is young, if you see it's bending, then you try to fix it, you put some kind of stick, tie it, and when the, the tree is growing, would grow straight. The formators are here like that stick. They are close to you. They are supporting you that you try to grow straight. But you are, as Father Abu said, 
That's the human formation also. It is not only spiritual formation. You are not here only for spiritual formation. First of all, you have to become good human beings. Because, as I said, some of you might decide to live. To live during the novitiate, probably during the philosophy, probably during the theology. I am 100% I am sure, even though I wish all of you could come to the stage of brotherhood or priesthood, I am sure that not all of you will come to this, to this stage. Some of you will go out. But if you become good father in the family, and you, if you become good citizen of this country, it was worthwhile, worthwhile to be in the formation. Because you grew not only spiritually, but they helped you to grow also as a human being. Because spirituality can, can be built on humanity. You know, so if we do not have good human base, if you are not, if you, if you are not good human person, you cannot be a good brother or priest later on in the religious congregation. First of all, you must become good human being, and then from there, because actually, what is the spirituality? Spirituality is helping us to be more human. It is not vice versa that humanity is helping spirituality. Spirituality is helping us to be more human because, first of all, we are human beings. We, we were not born as angels or saints, we were born as human beings. And, first of all, we must grow as human beings, be good human beings. And then, if you are a good human being, the spirituality will help you to progress in your humanity. So, this is very important. Be open. Okay? So, one, one more point. I think you are not allowed to, to use the mobiles during the novitiate. Are you? Yes. You are not allowed. Okay, it is good to some extent. Sometimes, you know, we try to, to keep our foreman be like in a cage. They are not allowed to do anything. And uh, the formators decide for everything. And when you go out, you are like wild dog. Because when we keep a dog in a cage, it will be going around, you know, in the cage, and <laughs> the dog will be obeying. You, you tell the dog, sit down, it will sit down. But once, if the dog is not used to, to go out from the cage, if you open the, the cage, it will run and you can, you can call for, after the dog, it will not listen to you. Because it was not used to the freedom. It was always in the cage. And sometimes, we may, we may create this kind of atmosphere also in the seminary. You might feel like in the cage, you are protected. You know, because the formators decide for you. But once you are out, you are, we might be like wild dogs. We do not know what to do. Oh, now finally I have my mobile phone. I will be 24 hours on the mobile. You see, we can go from extreme to extreme. And that's not good. Why, I, why am I saying that? The, the social media, you know, these facilities are nowadays very important. We cannot somehow survive anymore without internet. We need it. But what is, what is more important is that your formators train, train you to responsibly use the social media, internet. That it is not uh, that when you get the phone, that you will be 24 hours, 7 days 
on the mobile, sending messages, just chatting and uh, checking on Facebook, Instagram. You have to be a responsible user of the social media. I give you some examples. There was one of the conference who was already ordained. He was already a priest. He went for a mission. And then he was also on the Facebook. So one day he received friend request on the Facebook. Somebody sent the, the friend request even though he did not know he did not know the lady. There was in the profile uh, picture photo there was nice young lady. Oh, he was happy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> nice lady, my friend again. So he accepted. He accepted friend request. And then, when the girl saw that uh, she was accepted, they started chatting on Messenger, no? They were going on and on and on. And after a while, he received a photo from the girl. You know what kind of photo? Uh, Topless. <laughs> nude photo of the girl. The girl sent him a nude photo. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> So he was thrilling, you know, he was so happy. Oh, okay. So he continued chatting, and oh, photos were coming more and more. You know, so I was happy. And before finishing the chat, the girl asked him, Are you, all, are you also on WhatsApp? Do you have WhatsApp number? And he said, yes, I, I have my WhatsApp number. So he sent immediately, and the girl sent her number. So the next day, they started chatting on WhatsApp, because WhatsApp, somehow, they say it's much safer because you have privacy. So they started chatting, and again, the girls sent some photos. And after a while, the girl asked the girlfriend, can you send me also one, one spicy photo? I would like to see something. <laughs> <laughs> and at the, at the end, she convinced him. So he took the photo of, the, of his private part. He sent it. And girl insisted, oh, he sent more photos. And after that, you know what happened? You know what happened? The, the girl sent him a message saying, this is my bank account. If you do not send me this amount of money on my account, I will post all your photos that you sent to me on Facebook and I will tag you. The confrere almost collapsed. He got scared. He didn't know what to do. But as, as the Gospel says, even the prodigal, prodigal son came to his senses. And he also came to his senses and he said, I will go to my provincial and I will tell him openly what happened to me. So he decided to go to the provincial and he told him, Father provincial, I have a big problem. I messed up my life. I, I accepted friend request from, uh, from an unknown girl and we started chatting and later on he exchanged nude photos. Now the girl is threatening me that she will post my photos on Facebook. What shall I do? And the provincial was also smart and you see how important it is to share your problems with your, uh, with your uh, formators. So the provincial told him, let's go to the police, because the girl cannot blame me. Let's go to the police and make the report. So they went to the police, they reported the case, and the police started investigating the case. So at the end, you know what did they find? You know what did they find? On the other side, there was no girl. 
There was a man who was, who was making money on this country. He was getting uh, naked pictures of priests or some people who were married probably, you know, married men. He was getting these kind of photos. Later on he was threatening, blackmailing, and some people, because they were really scared, they sent him the money. So you see how important it is to be open with your problems and difficulties in your life. And uh, even though later on this conference got some kind of admonition from the provincial, but he's still in the society and he continues. We can make this. We are human beings, but be open because it can save your life and your vocation. Okay, so this is one example. Next, ex next example also, responsible use of social media. In the, in the States, there was one confrere also doing his mission. So you know that there are dating sites. You can register and you can date, you know, uh, you can chat and you can even have the video calls sometimes. And you can date a girl. So this confrere also entered, registered in the dating site and he started chatting with a girl, but he did, not, he did not realize that the girl was under 18, even though I do not know how it happened that the girl managed to register, okay, I, I know, I will explain later on, but the, the contract did not realize that the girl was under 18, so we call it minor. She was, I think, 15. And he started chatting with the girl. So they were chatting for, for weeks, for, uh, for months, and later on, they decided to meet each other. Because it was getting, you know, closer, closer, and hotter, and hotter with the relationship. So they decided to meet, physically. So they made an appointment in a coffee, coffee shop. So, the confrere decided to go, and when he came to the coffee shop, you know whom he whom did he find? Police. <laughs> <laughs> there was internet police because they created purposely this kind of profile with minor girl because they, they, they were after the, the men who were abusing minors. You see, again, be careful how you use your media, your telephone, your, your laptop, your internet. So it's very important, because especially when it comes to minors nowadays, it's very serious. The church, the society does not play. Even though it might be in the culture that Sometimes you can see that boys and girls, they are not even 18, they go around already together. Be careful. Because it can go against you one day. And not only against you, but also against the, the society and against the church. So this is my, my appeal to you. Be honest during your formation. And as I said, if, even if you fell in love, there is nothing wrong because we are human beings. But be honest. And I, I can share also from my life. When I was in the second year of philosophy, I fell in love. And when I went for Christmas holiday to uh, home, I told my parents, mom and dad, I am leaving the seminary because I have a girlfriend. I saw how devastated they, they were. It was, you know, very difficult for them to accept. And I saw, I saw that. And because of that, I told myself, I will try to go back to the seminary. But when I go back to the seminary, I will go to my spiritual director and I will share with him my situation. Probably he might help me to solve it. And he did. And today I am here. Because of that spiritual director. He was walking with me 
and he helped me to overcome this, uh, this crisis. You know, when girl uh, later on, I, I explained to her, look, I feel I have the vocation. And she accepted. And we are good friends even up to date. So you see, it does not mean that if you fell in love, if you happen, if ha something happens to you in your life, it can be solved somehow. If you are willing and if you, if you are open to share with your audiences. So this is my appeal. Go to the chapel and ask yourself, what is my motivation for being in the society? And Second challenge, be open. Because even if after your, your reflection in the chapel, you will find out that you are here for different purposes, I can tell you, sometimes God can arrive on the crooked lines as well. And even it might happen that you enter the society with the wrong motivation by properly being accompanied by your formators, it can happen that you realize really this is your place that you want to become missionary, that you want to become a religious brother or religious priest. But be open and if you are, then you can save your, your vocation. So thank you very much and we would like to promise you to pray for you that whatever decision you make, that you are God. This is, this is our prayer, that you make the right decision during your formation, whether to become religious brother, religious priest, or good father. Make the right decision. This is our prayer for you. And we ask you to pray for us, for your formators, that we continue on our way, we decided to go. So thank you very much. Very much, Mr.